And now, Drop the Dead Donkey. This episode was first shown in January 93, when controversy surrounded the Calcutt report on curbing the press, the collapse of royal marriages, and British Airways poaching of passengers. above me, 15 stories high. A man is threatening to hurl himself onto the pavement if the council go ahead with his eviction order. The police have caught... No. No, no, it, it's, it's all too dull. <laughs> yeah, unless we get lucky and he jumps and then we get the old entrails on the pavement shot. Well, look, I know, Jerry, come on. Jerry, quick, I don't think this is a good idea. We can sneak in before the floor is out. <laughs> Damien. That's it, just here. Damien. It's a better shot. Pan up. See? Much dizzier. <laughs> right, <thank you. laughs> And out on a window ledge above me, 15 stories high, a man is threatening. Bloody hell! <laughs> Oh, you're watching that? Mm-hmm. How is Jerry? Well, out of hospital. I reckon what saved him was the metal plate he has in his head from Damien's How Dangerous a Robber Bullets piece. <laughs> oh, yes. Helen, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate the way you've already halved my workload. It's made a huge difference. Some evenings now I'm getting home by 9.30. And it's done wonders for my stress symptoms. You've completely unblocked my sinuses. George, you say the nicest things. Please. It needed saying. George, got some reactions to the Calcutt report. Kelvin McKenzie says he's not having some clapped-out judge tell him what to put on the front page of The Sun. No, it's Rupert Murdoch's job. <laughs> So you're saying it won't be liable for tax if I put 70% into offshore funds in the Seychelles? All right. And you'll find out how soon I can chop that forest down without losing that tax exemption? <laughs> Bye, Justin. Why beat around the bush? Why not just go out and mug some blind children? <laughs> Jealous, Henry. If you had a top-notch accountant like me, you wouldn't be experiencing your money problems. I hear you're selling the boat. Yes, I should get 30 grand for the boat, OK? Just about get me out of this hole. Damn thing's been costing me as much as all my ex-wives and their bloody maintenance. <laughs> God almighty, I reckon it worked out about 300 quid a shag. <laughs> Morning, hot shots. Are we cooking with napalm? You bet. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> now, as you know, I'm not here. Right, in that case. Uh, but there is just something I'd like to pop into your percolator to see if it comes out brown. <laughs> Studio interview technique. We've had a couple of complaints. Tory central office felt that last week Henry was a, a bit hard on Peter Lilly. He can't be too hard on Peter Lilly. <laughs> Gus, the man is slimier than a tapeworm's douchebag. <laughs> he just wouldn't answer the question. All right, all right. All I'm saying is, we've got Sir Teddy Taylor and Ken Livingstone coming in on Thursday. I told you, Gus. I'm taking care of the interview. Terrific. Well, let's keep kneecapping the opposition. Uh, an EC directive's insisting battery hens be given more room. I should think so. Even dumb creatures have a right to sufficient space. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yes. There is one more thing. I asked Helen to take a fresh look at our working procedures, which she has done, of course, extremely rapidly. So I'm sure you're all looking forward to her findings. What the hell do you mean by this? Should concentrate on content rather than excitement. Are you suggesting that I spend all my time ambulance chasing? Well, if I need to flag them down for your cameraman. <laughs> I have supplied this station with some of its most compelling footage. Like your report on that man sentenced to the electric chair. That was great television. Do you really think it was right to leave the radio mic on throughout the entire execution? 
<laughs> that was justified in order to show the full horror of judicial murder. Anyway, I couldn't use any of it. All well, that voltage played havoc with the reception. <laughs> but the point is... My... Damien! I'm not looking for a confrontation, so put in a memo, OK? What's the meaning of this, Helen? Newsreaders' rosters cannot be altered for individual convenience. I am referring to the way that you are consistently making yourself unavailable for the evening broadcast every Friday and Saturday. So he can do his after-dinner speeches. It's totally unfair. Oh, go back to defrauding the Inland Revenue tight ass. <laughs> Listen, right now I need the income from those speeches. I'm sorry, but I can't let someone dictate their schedule. Quite right. Well done, Helen, for putting a stop to these sloppy, unprofessional practices. Have you read the bit about promotional appearances? <laughs> promotional appearances? Well, I do feel the large number of supermarkets you open, your exercise videos and your book of cosmetic hints for pets <laughs> all compromise your credibility as a newsreader. Now, you listen to me, little Miss Rule Book. <laughs> Sally's got that strange look in her eye. Reminds me of Margaret the time we had that big row in bee jams and she could cuss me with a frozen turkey. <laughs> so, uh, how are things on the home front? Oh, quite civilised, really. Margaret brought me up a cup of tea this morning. Along with the divorce papers. <laughs> oh, and there's some good news about Deborah. Because we were worried that she was on drugs and it turned out that she wasn't. Oh, that is good. She was just selling them. <laughs> Selling. Valium. I did wonder where all my bottles had gone to. <laughs> and possible legal action. So, Helen Jackboot features, what do you say to that? I say that promotional appearances are forbidden in this, your contract. Now, I suggest you go and sit in the corner and find someone to read it to you. <laughs> Helen! We do rather appear to have an ongoing underwear and an entanglement situation here. This report of yours does seem to be raising <laughs> rather a lot of questions. For instance, I'm not clear about the meaning of this paragraph here. Well, that's just a point for discussion, you know, as to whether your attending editorial meetings is the most effective use of your time. <laughs> yes. Well, actually, you see, uh, I have a very important function at those meetings. Good. And that is? <laughs> well, I'm a sort of hands-off, eyes-on, overviewish, non-participatory sort of hands-off. I'll get back to you on this. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific, Helen. You keep up the good work. <laughs> Cunning bitch. Gus! <laughs> Gus, it's them report. Yes, sir. Uh, how do you feel about that, Henry? I feel about as happy as a pregnant hippo with piles. <laughs> Are you going to do something about it? Well, I'd love to, but it's all really down to Helen. I don't feel I can interfere. We must have a chat sometime about how you feel she's fitting in. More hours about this Benetton ad. The one that shows a seabird covered in oil. Ugh, it's enough to make you sick. Now, there's an idea. Someone should go into one of their shops, throw up over the jumpers and say, how's that for the United Colours of Benetton? <laughs> what is? I've just typed up the running order and apparently I'm on British Airways Flight 731 to New York. <laughs> yeah. Hell bells! What's up? My boat is only worth 15,000. Apparently there's a, a crack in the hull from the time I got rat arsed and played chicken with that super tanker. Peace treaty in Yugoslavia is confirmed. Uh. That's number 47. No, Joy, this is a genuine, lasting peace plan. Oh, there's only been 16 of them. <laughs> Joy, what are you doing to my plant? No wonder it's dead. It's not. It's showing the green shoots of recovery. <laughs> not a bad bulletin this evening, eh? Passable, I suppose. I thought you looked very good in that jacket. Yes, and... <laughs> Nothing. Just you look very nice in it. Have you been drinking? <laughs> good heavens, no. I'm just complimenting you on your good taste. You have been drinking. I have not been drinking. <laughs> I am merely trying to have a friendly chat about things like... Uh... Oh, I know what I meant to ask you. 
You haven't possibly your accountant's number, have you? <laughs> what would you want that for, Helen? Well, I was wondering if I could... Oh, I see. Well, I'm afraid Jocelyn doesn't take on anyone. He needs a personal recommendation. Yes, well, I suppose I'd have to get one of those. Yes, you would. <laughs> would you like me to recommend you, Henry? Well, yes, that would be very kind. <laughs> well, I'm sure I could do that. <laughs> Only, you were very rude to me. <laughs> Was I? Yes, very rude. <laughs> I see. Well, obviously, about that, uh... <laughs> I'm, um, I I'm very... I I'm deeply... <laughs> yes, Henry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't quite catch that. I'm sorry! I'm bloody well sorry! <laughs> I accept your groveling apology. I'll speak to Jocelyn. Good night. I had my fingers crossed, all right. <laughs> Those more attacks on Charles. Fancy being criticised for sleeping with someone else's wife. Honestly, I don't know what the world's coming to. <laughs> I'll get on to our royal correspondent. Oh, there's this memo from Jockstrap defining his function at editorial meetings. Jockstrap? It's Gus's nickname. Well, why do you call him Jockstrap? Because he's full of bollocks. <laughs> I suppose I haven't got a nickname here yet, have I? No. <laughs> um, listen, Helen, I was thinking, this report of yours, you don't think maybe you're running at things a bit fast, do you? What things? Well, you know, like over Henry's after-dinner speeches. I'm sorry, but to make an exception would be unfair. Sally's right. <laughs> no, uh, we never say that. Sally's right. <laughs> it's a sort of office tradition. <laughs> you see, uh, these money problems have really hit Henry very hard. I'm sorry, but are you saying that I'm wrong? No, but if... Well, then you agree that I'm right. Look, all I'm saying is that for once in your life you could afford to be less right. Oh, well, that's very logical, Mr Spock. And then maybe things would calm down a bit. Everyone wouldn't go around getting so mad at you and you wouldn't be known around the office as Stalin. <laughs> in an affectionate sort of way. I'll get on with this. Bloody woman! Do you know what story she's just given me? Noise pollution. I mean, talk about boring. How am I supposed to get sexy pictures of noise, for God's sake? I'm supposed to stand and point this thing at the bloody M4. Well, uh, look on the bright side. You might distract someone and cause a pile-up. That's a point. <laughs> Oh, did Jocelyn phone you? Yes, we met last night. I gave him the 15,000 I got from selling the boat to squirrel away in some island full of fat bankers. Jocelyn's very good. He uses the same tax havens as Mark Thatcher. If I may have a quick word, providing Helen's allowing me to come out of my office. This interview tomorrow. I'm taking care of it. Nothing will go wrong. Yes, it's in safe hands. <laughs> yes, well, while we're on the delegation front, Helen, could you talk to the cleaners about the graffiti in the toilets? Some of it is ancient. I mean, there's still some jokes about Stalin up there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're definitely going to restart the war with Iraq. Oh, no, that's very depressing. Yeah. I mean, having a war with the same country twice. <laughs> the viewers won't get very excited about that. <laughs> if only we could attack Tehran. <laughs> Sorry, I don't understand. Why are you unable to pay my standing order? What withdrawal yesterday? Look, I'm Sally Smedley. I don't bandy words with serving staff who wear name badges. Problem? Nothing Jocelyn Webb can't handle. Helen, why can't I have something exciting? Like that report where you spirited that little orphan girl out of Yugoslavia. Oh, that was brilliant. What was wrong with that? Damien, she didn't want to come. <laughs> She got in that car of her own free will. You told her you were taking her to the circus. <laughs> I'm still wading through complaints from the EC, the UN, her parents. So, no, you may not have a more exciting story than noise pollution. I see. And where exactly is this box number Mr Webb's mail is being forwarded to? Panama. I see. Thank you. 
Panama. Perfectly rational explanation, I'm sure. Probably on holiday. I'm calling his office. Hello? Oh, hello, Chief Inspector. <laughs> yes, I was after Jocelyn. I... Uh-huh. 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 No extradition treaty. Thank you. He's done a runner with all our money, hasn't he? Not necessarily. Just because he's emptied my bank account, sold his flat, closed his office and taken a one-way ticket to South America doesn't mean we should jump to conclusions. Henry is about to do his Krakatoa impersonation. <laughs> Tanner says he peaks over 120 decibels. <laughs> What's 120? Double what the human ear can normally take. OK, I'll go 140. <laughs> Look, woman. You are going to have to accept that this man, who is very good at, quote, putting money where no one can trace it, has put our money where no one can trace it. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Damien, your contact at British Telecom just rang. Claims he's got a tape of the Queen ringing the Samaritans. <laughs> One of your wife's solicitors is on the phone. You're late with the maintenance. Say I'll call back. <laughs> so, I uh, uh, believe you've had a brush with Jocelyn Webb. <laughs> now, I did a piece on him a while back. Small-time crook, really. Don't suppose he'd fool anyone with half a brain in his head. <laughs> Hundred and seventy-two. <laughs> no point crying over spilt milk. Oh, this calmness isn't natural. Something's got to give. Oh, Sally, I've just had a little chat with Helen, and I've definitely decided to implement her recommendation banning promotional appearances. <laughs> Hope that's not a problem. <laughs> I'll turn this off. You don't want to get him broken, do you? OK, Henry, mortgage crisis. Pre-recorded insert going in three seconds, two, one, and... With me in the studio are Sir Teddy Taylor and Ken Livingstone to discuss the continuing rise in house repossessions. Sir Teddy, if I might come to you first. These statistics are quite frightening, aren't they? Well, yes, they are worrying. And, of course, no one's underestimating the seriousness of I must admit, I was a bit worried about Isn't using it? Henry for this. And of course, Apparently, he's been left virtually penniless by this accountant business. Yes, well, but true professionals leave their personal problems at home. You're right, of course. But simply As always. <laughs> yes, but what about the, um, the thousands of people who are losing their homes? Well, of course, that's disturbing, but quite honestly, there's no open and shut case for government intervention in the housing market. Well, if and I might just interrupt, I, I have to say that is a load of absolute bollocks! <laughs> have you... <laughs> I, mean, have, have, I mean, have you thought? Have you thought what it's like for these poor bastards? <laughs> lost every penny they worked for. Debt collectors knocking at the door. Building societies on the bloody phone every five bloody minutes. That's absolutely right. Oh, shut up. You're not just as bad. <laughs> Is this lying? I, I, no one cares. No one cares uh, about these innocent victims losing their homes, their sanity, <laughs> their boats. Henry! What? We're going to have to stop the interview there. Why? Because uh, of technical reasons. Uh, you're needed next door, Henry. A nice cup of coffee and a lobotomy and everything will be fine. <laughs> Ken, so Teddy, I'm afraid we're going to have to start the interview again. No, it just means it's going so well. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry about yeah. this. Yes, I'm afraid he brought some little personal problems into work with him. We'll continue the interview with Sally Smedley, if that's acceptable. Oh, I'm sure that's wise. Only she's still a bit upset. It'll be fine, OK. Well, naturally, you should conduct your inland revenue inquiry and as soon as possible. Into me. Yes, you can count on my complete cooperation. Goodbye. More on Jocelyn Webb? Do not mention the name Jocelyn Webb to me ever again. What's the name we're not supposed to mention? Jocelyn Webb. Jocelyn Webb. Okay, Jocelyn Webb. <laughs> no, no, she said not to mention Jocelyn Webb. Oh, don't mention no, Jocelyn Webb. No, don't mention <laughs> It's quite devastating crisis, which is affecting... Nearly there. Well done, Helen. The country has to be addressed Sally, back to Ken again. 
So, do you accept that a rescue programme is impractical? Not at all. The government's got a duty to help ordinary people who are trapped in this web of debt. A web which stretches <laughs> across the country. <laughs> the people, ordinary people, are caught in this web. Sorry. And if the government isn't prepared to... We're going to stop the interview. Why? It's going extremely well. Uh, we're stopping because of... Uh, technical, technical reasons. reasons. <laughs> I wonder if you could possibly answer without using the word web. <laughs> without using the word web? Yes. Lovely. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Sally. Right, from that last <coughs> question. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. So, do you accept that a rescue programme is impractical? Well, something has to be done. Otherwise, housing will soon become available at knockdown prices and we'll witness the usual circus of speculators jostling to get their <laughs> noses in the trough. It was going very well. Why on earth did we stop? That decision was Helen's. We must have a chat sometime about how you feel she's fitting in. We must. Is that me you talking about, Gus? Ah, Helen. Congratulations on the interview which you were so keen to take charge of. Can we be sure that they will always go that smoothly? Yes. Well, if they were real professionals, they wouldn't have let their emotions intrude on their work. So why don't you just drop that into your think tank and see if it does the docky paddle? <laughs> what was all that about? I'm just having a word with Helen about how she let you down over that interview. We must have a chat sometime about how you feel she's fitting in. I feel she's fitting in very well, Gus. I think she's terrific. Really? Are you sure you're not getting personally involved over Helen, George? On the rebound from Margaret, perhaps? Yes, Gus. I am very sure. Right, I'm, uh, I'm ready to restart that interview now if you fix those technical problems. <laughs> Bloody amateurs. Getting emotional. Letting their feelings get in the way. Why can't they just get a grip? <laughs> How about a cup of tea? <laughs> oh. George, about Henry, uh... <laughs> uh, just as I thought. <laughs> Joy, get on to it. Our Golf War pictures are just too lacklustre. Right, well, I'll pop down the video shop and get out Terminator 3, shall I? And what on earth happened with that Rudolf Nuriev obituary? Oh, the computer got muddled and Gary Mabbott was next alphabetically. Yes. Well, we came within 30 seconds of describing the 20th century's greatest ballet dancer as a stocky Spurs utility man. And this after the Menachem Begin Joan Bakewell fiasco. Mm. We've got to downsize our sloppiness overload, Joy. Am I making myself clear? Don't be silly, Gus.